Hey everyone, this is Nadia and welcome to my channel where I talk about learning to code and building a career in tech. Today I wanted to share my story of going uh, from having zero technical skills to being employed as a programmer in just 9 months. When I say that I was non-technical, I'm not being modest, I actually was completely non-technical. Had zero education in computer science in school or at the university, always focused so much uh, on foreign languages, literature, and humanities in general, and didn't have any interactions with technology, really. So I wasn't like a typical Tim Carrere or a computer science nerd when I was growing up. Um, I thought that this world was not for me. I thought that there were people who were good with numbers and then people who were good with words and languages, and I was always in the second camp. So uh, after university, I worked as, a, as an editor and a journalist as, at an independent news magazine in Belarus. Uh, this was an amazing time, very fulfilling. However, unfortunately, at some point we had to close it down and I was faced with a decision of what I want to do with the rest of my life. For context, I was 25. This is an age at which in Belarus, usually the expectation is that you are already pretty much set in your career, you, are, you have figured out what you want to do with your life, and this is not an age where it's normal or expected of somebody to completely change their careers and kind of go on a new uh, route. For me, it was a very confusing and dark moment where I didn't know what to do, so I explored different options, uh, and one thing was sure, was certain for me, is that I wanted to move from Belarus to Poland, and uh, I knew that I didn't have enough hard skills to make this transition easy. Uh, I didn't know the language that well, I didn't know anybody, I didn't have any connections, and I didn't know the culture or the country that well. So I knew that in order to be successful in a new country, I had to acquire some technical skills that would make it easier for me to get a job. So see, this was very practical, kind of down-to-earth motivation, nothing inspired, and I didn't have like a calling to become a software engineer, nothing like that. I started with something very simple, simple technical skills, like semi-technical skills. So I was taking courses in uh, Excel and Photoshop for a little bit. Then uh, it turned out that I actually had a lot more time on my hand before I had to move to Poland. So my husband really encouraged me to continue learning and kind of make the next step and learn to code properly. And this is what I did. Despite my immense internal resistance, I took this plunge. I felt that I wasn't the type of person who could learn to code, but still, uh, drip by drip, I managed to convince myself that I could become, become that person. So I started learning. When it comes to learning, uh, there were, like in theory, there were different routes, but in, like, in reality, there was just one. So first, there was this option of going back to university to study CS, which is, was not something that I considered because I wanted to make the switch quickly and didn't want to spend another few years studying computer science. Then there was the option of going to a boot camp, which wasn't an option either, since all of the boot camps in the Ruby on Rails that existed in Europe back then were very expensive. They were around $10,000, which was way out of my budget. So that was not an option either. So I went the self-study route, which meant that I learned on my own. I didn't have any formal instructor or curriculum or mentor. I was kind of uh, creating my own curriculum from bits and pieces that I found online. Uh, it wasn't structured in any way, but it worked well for me. And I think that if you're the kind of person who works well and studies well on your own, I think that this is something that you might try. But this is not for everybody, obviously. If you need uh, external pressure, if you need like a community, then you should probably consider other options. So initially I started learning JavaScript because this was the most popular language that everybody was learning. And of course I wanted to be not to be a loser and find a job very quickly. So I started learning JavaScript. I failed miserably. The resources that I found online didn't work for me at all. I couldn't understand any of them. Nothing made sense. I think that I spent a month and a half kind of trying or month trying to make sense of any of those tutorials. Uh, I couldn't. And I was pretty close to giving up on this whole programming thing. Luckily, I remembered a piece of advice that my friend gave me a couple of years prior to that. He told me about this language, this great language that existed called Ruby and a framework that uses that language for Ben Rails. So the first thing that I tried was called Try Ruby, which was like a very short 15 minute tutorial that allowed you to uh, see what Ruby was. So it's like a great introduction for somebody who uh, has never seen any code in their life. Then there was uh, Code Academy that still exists, that's still very popular. I did the courses in Ruby, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, the introductory ones. And the third major thing that I did was 
Ruby on Rails tutorial by Michael Hartel, which kind of changed the direction of my learning and kind of direction of my life because this was the first tutorial when I saw that I could understand what coding was and uh, I could see myself doing this thing going further. So uh, very grateful to this tutorial. I think I went over it around three times so that I could understand roughly around like 70, 80% of it. I couldn't understand all of it at that point. I think that if I could go back in time, I would do a little bit more like introductory courses to web development and kind of understand HTML and CSS and the Git and like command line a little bit better. And there is a very nice series of courses called Learn Enough to be Dangerous, which uh, teach you all those skills and kind of walks you through the foundations that you need to master. Uh, but other than that, uh, it was a great tutorial. It taught me, it kind of laid the foundation of my learning and of my knowledge. Afterwards, I did online courses like built 30 Rails apps in 30 days or like uh, eight Rails apps in eight days, which were like in reality pretty much the same app. Uh, I found all those things valuable at that point because they helped me repeat the stuff that I already knew, but they didn't really provide me with any explanations, which was fine because I already kind of had the basis built from other uh, resources. Then I worked through quite a few books kind of fundamental books on Ruby and Ruby on Rails, the classics, and I'll leave the links to all of them uh, down below. Uh, I also did a uh, work through a book called Common Sense Introduction to uh, Algorithms and Data Structures, which was like a perfect introduction to the scary world of computer science for people who don't really know computer science or who don't know math or who don't like math. And the next step was actually building my own uh, type projects those projects weren't really weren't fancy at all. They were pretty basic. So one of them was me building a project management tool for a small editorial team, which is like obviously a fake editorial team that had very simple and basic needs. But still, it was an app that I built kind of based it off some of the tutorials that I did. And I expanded it and made it my own. And another thing was uh, an app that was scraping web Bandcamp and gathering links to the music that you could legally use in your work. So nothing too fancy, nothing to be too proud of, but honestly, I think that at that point in my web development journey, this was kind of the optimal level of quality that I could uh, achieve. And uh, they served the purpose. They helped me get hired eventually. The topic of me getting hired and getting my first job will be covered in part two of this video. But for now, this is the beginning of the story and kind of part of the story of how I went from having zero technical skills to being hired as a software engineer. I hope you found this useful. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any follow-ups, any questions, or anything that didn't make sense to you. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.